Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Wednesday, July 16, 2014, Island Fest and Festival Commission meeting. We are going to start out with, uh, we have the roll call here. We got a full quorum, so we're going to be able to vote on anything and pass it tonight. Um, we are going to start with the town or the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Moreau, would you please lead us in this? Sure will. Oops. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. We're going to go on with the approval of the agenda, but I'm going to look down at number eight, the discussion items. The centennial celebration is Saturday, October 11th. Not the date it says, so that is to be crossed out. And Miss Bridget Hurst, who's sitting to my left, needs to be added on to the commissioner's names here. Do I need to put a motion out there to accept those changes? So moved. All in favor? Any opposed? All right. With that going on, I would like to do a quick introduction because this is our first televised meeting with our commission. And starting to my left, I have Bridget Hurst, Julie Cordes, Dave Zula, Lauren Smith Township Liaison, Bill Moreau, Ann Darznick, Nicole Feeney, and Woody Clark up here on the board. All right. We need to uh, have the approval of the minutes from June 18th. I'm hoping that everybody got a chance to read those. And uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from. Oh, see, now this is a different one. Oh. <laughs> Lauren, put a motion. Hello. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from June 18th, 2014. Julie, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, then. So moved. Does anybody have an extra agenda sitting down there? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. Okay, with um, that being taken care of, we have a couple guests with us in the house. Uh, this is pertaining to some history, a lot of history, with the centennial celebration that we're going to be doing on Macomb Street and around the island Saturday, October 11th, and possibly something Friday, Sunday, but it's definitely Saturday, October 11th, and we are going to bring the president of the Historical Society, Tammy Taylor, and the vice president of the Historical Society, Mark Lafayette. Thanks, guys, for coming down here. They're going to give you a nice summary of what's going on and a little bit about our history here for the past hundred. Thank you, Chad. Um, as Chad mentioned, uh, my name is Tammy Taylor. I'm the president of the Historical Society. It's Mark Lafayette. He's the vice president. We're going to give a um, brief history of why Groziel decided to separate from Monkwagen and become a township on its own. Then we're going to talk about some of the significant events that have happened over the past hundred years. And then finally, I'm going to give a um, quick synopsis of some of the things that the Historical Society has planned for the uh, 100th anniversary celebration. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mark and he's going to talk about the history. Good evening. Hello. Oftentimes we, we talk about the history of Gros Seal and some of it is lost sort of in the shadows of why Gros Seal and Trenton started off as Mongwagen and we ended up as two separate entities. I invite everyone who wants to know the particulars of the difference of oh, the transportation taxation laws of the 1830s and why it was that we decided to, to pull away from the rest of Mongwagen to come down to the Historical Society where we can talk in depth on the subject, but I promised that I would have a brief history. <laughs> so we go back on Mongwagen Township to 1818, just a few years after the McComb brothers showed up on the river met with the natives of the area, and were deeded the island of Gros Seal. Mogwagan decides in 1818 that it's going to set up a township authorized by Lewis, uh, Lewis Cass. It becomes a, one of the first townships of, of Michigan. Those boundaries are hemmed and hawed, but they finally decided in 1827 what the actual boundaries of Mongwagan Township would be, and it becomes really two things, the mainland and the island. The first township supervisor 
of Monguagan Township is Abram Truax. And it is Abram Truax, his friends, and the power players of Trenton and Grosseal that really set the stage on why it is that Grosseal ends up pulling away from the rest of Monguagan. It all comes down to Michigan itself. Michigan itself forms in 1837. And in 1837, we have, what, under 100,000 people who live in the state? We need to find out why it is that the township began to develop. In 1837, the state of Michigan, I wrote it down so I would not forget. <coughs> In 1837, the state of Michigan decides that it would adopt an internal improvement commission. And that internal improvement commission had to decide how it would be that the taxation and the money of the state would be spent. They, they figured that the best way to encourage people to come to the state of Michigan was to improve all manners of transportation. That means roads, shipping, and this new thing called trains. One of the things that they did was in 1847, <clears throat> I even wrote it down here, they established an exemption from the general taxation laws that said that anything that had to do with transportation, shipbuilding, the gravel to make roads, trains themselves, the land that train would go on, that there would be an exemption of all property and effects of said companies, whether personal, real, or mixed, shall be exempt from all and every other tax. So, we have main players. If you look at the map of Mongwagan Township, you see the island of Grosseal. On the city side, you can pretty much see the property lines going from north to south, the main players, Solomon Sibley. Sibley owned a quarry. What was that quarry used for? Limestone, crushed limestone, which would become the, the, basically the bed of every road that would be made in this county almost. You go a little bit south from there, you come to Jow Slocum, Slocum's Island, Elizabeth Park, Abram Truax themselves, Truax Junction, and Junction, and you see railroad lines. Every one of those railroad lines comes because Abram Truax becomes a main financial partner in the Michigan Central Railroad. Michigan started off with three main railroads, the Northern, the Central, and the Southern. Those were owned by the state. State couldn't make them go. 1847, they all, those three, went to private hands. Abram Truax was one of the main investors in the Michigan Central Railroad. All of his land was used then as the junctions for the different railroad stops along the way. All of his friends used their land for the railroad stops along the way, going north toward the city of Detroit on the line from Toledo to Detroit. Because the railroad lines cut across their property, every single one of them, all real and personal property, was exempt from taxation. So, we look at Gross Steel. In 1850, the, the population of Mogwagon Township was under 1,000 people, 984. The valuation of the property you see is right there at about $60,000. The general taxation rules of the state of Michigan said that taxes were levied on the land, not on income. Income tax doesn't come into play until 1862. So as you see, there is a steady population growth and then an explosion in the years after the Civil War. The township supervisors through that time are primarily farmers from the city, uh, f farmers from, from the township uh, come from mostly Gross Seal. Businessmen, mostly on the city side. That becomes the division. As money is collected, the valuation of Gross Seal is almost 80% of the taxation base of Mongolagan Township. While 80% of the taxation base came from Grosseal, where did all the infrastructure go? Where were all the roads built? All the city edifices? Every monument, 
every building, every city hall, every everything was on the Trenton side. Not to say anything about Trenton, but Trenton felt that it was the business hub. There wasn't even a bridge to Gross Hill at the time. Ferry service happened a few times a day. So if you had to come over, there were no shops, nothing on Gross Hill. There were no main roads other than basically cart paths and dirt. City of Trenton had street lights, paved roads, sidewalks. And they did all of that on the taxation base that came 80% from Gross Seal. The township supervisors battled back and forth. You know, where should all this money go? Shouldn't it, some roads be made on Gross Seal? We didn't even have a business district. We didn't have any roads, nothing. So the stream of, of township supervisors became a who's who of Trenton and a who's who of Gross Seal. You had the Truaxes, the Slocums. You had, uh, into the 1860s, during the time of the Civil War, you had James Vreeland, who would be then on the southern uh, border of uh, Mongwagan Township, today Rockwood and Flat, uh, Flat Rock. And they began to battle back and forth over where the money would be spent. When Louis Gros, in 1850, came here, he became a very outspoken opponent. I use him as an example. He's my great-great-grandfather, by the way. Uh, you're sit and currently sitting on the Gros farm. Um, Gros Road South, 650 acres, 550 acres tillable, was, was his farm. He became the township uh, supervisor during that time as well. And he... If you want to see a picture of him, that's him right off the boat from Germany and the, and the nice hat on the left. <laughs> on the right-hand side, you have James Vreeland. When Louis Gros became the township supervisor, he was always interested in the money. He wanted to know where the taxes were going. The Municipal Aid Act that happened right in the time of Civil War Reconstruction you had municipalities begin to be able to independently give perks to all these shipbuilding companies, to all these railroad companies. And when Louis Gros became township supervisor, he actually asked for all the records, the financial records from the time previous. To this day, those records have disappeared and no one knows where they are. Louis Gros went on to basically be a, a champion for the rights of Gros Seal and the rights of an equitable distribution of the tax base. He even went so far in 1891, along with 47 other signatories here from Gros Seal, to petition the state legislature for an amendment to the taxation base of railroads and how railroads uh, were taxed because all the railroad tax money at that time, they were taxed based upon their shareholders, on how many stocks they had, and how many miles of, of track they laid. It was only about one half of one percent. That money went right to the state. Nothing was funneled back to the municipalities. That all again came from the general taxation base. So. Louis Gros ends up dying in 1894. The taxation base stayed exactly the same. Railroads were still exempt. Everybody kept on bickering back and forth between Trenton and Gros Seal. What was the final, the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, for Mongwagan Township? It was the invention of this new thing called the automobile. When the automobile came in the first two decades of the 20th century, the need for roads on Gros Seal no longer could Trenton say, oh, you don't need roads, you're just farmland. You don't need those roads, you don't need those bridges. And it is a steady, steady stream of, of committed landowners, business owners here on Gros Seal that finally petitioned the state for an equitable distribution of the monies and the taxation that convinced the state to allow us to separate from the rest of Mongwagan and become our own township. That first uh, township supervisor becomes uh, Leonard Wilton. Leonard Wilton becomes our first uh, supervisor in 1914. He did have opposition. They did have a, an election. Uh, the, the man who, who ended up um, losing to him was Robert Lee Stanton, another 
great island family, um, descendant from the McComb brothers himself. From 1914 until the present day, if you go into the township archives and you look at the minutes from, oh, let's say the first 20 years of our existence as a township, probably 80 to 90% of that is dealt with the infrastructure, the building of roads, making sure we had bridges, making sure we had adequate um, sewer, establishment of traffic lights. That's what we were focused on in the first quarter of our, of our existence after we became a township. For the rest of what happened over the next 100 years, there's Tammy. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm going to, we briefly put together a chart of the population growth on the island, and it is amazing. Uh, in, the in 1920, when the township, just after the township was founded, um, you can see the population doubled, and it pretty much has increased steadily over the years. Um, I don't have the 2010 figures up there because at the time I did this I couldn't find them. Um, it is the first time in the census history that our township population has actually gone down. Um, and that's mainly due, if not completely due, to the economic condition in Michigan right now. But that just gives you an idea of where we've, where we've come from and where we're at now. Um, Township milestones. This is actually a picture of the um, Wayne County Bridge right around opening. Um, f in the 1920s to 1940s, you know, uh, the seaplane sea base was established. That was a big part of our history, Naval Air Station, Grozeal, where we're at right now. Um, a housing shortage in 1943. Um, two wartime uh, housing subdivisions were built to accommodate um, servicemen from, from the United States, from uh, England and from Canada. Uh, the one at Whitehall was known as Diaper Lane, which I think is a great nickname for it because of all the young families coming and having children. Um, the one that probably people are most familiar with is Little Parkway, right off of Parkway. All of those were um, homes built for officers. In 43, um, you know, Grozeal residents were bringing, uh, were opening their doors and having naval officers stay with them, living with them, boarding with them, because there just wasn't enough room uh, to put everybody up. Um, the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you know, um, 1955, the Army installed the Nike um, nuclear war site here on Grosseal. So nuclear warheads just south where the old quarry used to be um, and where the Nature Conservancy area opened. Um, in 1960, Park Lane School opened. This was our first decentralized school. So in 1911, the centralized school was built. East River School was built on the same campus as that. So in 1960, it was the first time we expanded and built a school that was not centralized with everything else. Um, most people think Kroger's been here forever, but it's only since 1963, which when I started to do the, this, looking at all of this, it really amazed me. And then in 1976, not only did we celebrate the bicentennial of the country, but we also celebrated the bicentennial of Grozeal. <clears throat> More recently, uh, 50th anniversary of the Volunteer Fire Department. It's one of the oldest volunteer fire departments in the state. Uh, the township purchased Centennial Farm in 1976, and we moved here to the new township hall um, in Hangar 1 here in 2000. So that is very brief. Um, celebrations events coming up. If you want a more detailed uh, outline of what has happened in each of the de decades, uh, this past Sunday we opened a temporary display at the museum. We have a panel for each of the decades, so you can actually see photographs and learn about the history. There will be a guide with that that talks about the history and gives you much more detail on that. For the celebration October 11th, the Historic Society will be doing a, I'll call it a booklet, it's not going to be a book, um, but it's going to be fairly uh, encompassing that is going to go into more detail than the display guide, but we're going to talk about the 100 years of the township, talk about each of the supervisors, talk about why we became who we did, and um, talk about the events that have happened here. In the month of October, the Art Alliance and Grozeal Historical Society will be doing a joint photography exhibit at Custom at the Custom House, which is right next to the depot. That will be uh, feature photographers from Grozeal and photography of Grozeal, current and past. And then hopefully we are going to, and I, I'm pretty sure this is going to happen, along Macomb Street, uh, at least on the 11th, but we're hoping for the whole month of October, we're going to have historic photographs of the businesses um, on Macomb Street. So if you go by the new Macomb Street Market, you'll see a picture of Barms, Brown's Pharmacy and Mickleboro's and what it looked like 
previously, and that will be up and down the whole street. On the 11th itself, we're uh, going to do walking tours up and down Macomb. There will be more details about that. We're going to do probably three different walking tours. They'll start at the west end of Macomb by Macomb Commons. Uh, one will be very family-oriented, one will be very historically-oriented, and one will be a much more fun pub crawl kind of adult-oriented <laughs> tour. Um, uh, we we, all so smile on we I see how everybody smiles on that one. Uh, and then we're also looking at doing a dinner boat tour. A lot of our tours that we do at the Historical Society, we put you on some sort of transportation on land and drive you around the island. What we're trying to work out with Diamond uh, Jack is to actually put everybody on a boat, a dinner cruise, and go around the island on the water and get that perspective there. We're still working on that. That's still in the planning phase. And then um, we've been talking to the Festival Commission. We're hoping to do a time capsule and uh, get information in that, have some uh, uh, contest to get people to put information into the time capsule and then just talk about who we are um, as a township now and where we're going to be. So that's all I have. I hope that was helpful and inform informative and we'd be willing to answer any questions that anybody might have. I think we can adjourn our meeting after that, guys. <laughs> thank you, Mark and Tammy. We anybody got questions for either of them? Mark, how many generations are you? I know you're like you said your great grandfather was the how many generations is your family here? Um, we'll take my house, for example. Uh, my children make seven generations in seven my house. Seven generations of Islanders. Yep. That's very impressive. And Tammy, I know that when we were looking for photographs, now's a good time to ask anybody out there in that camera up there, if you have any type of old photos, That's good. please address them to the people at the Historical Society. Go ahead. Yep. And, um, and we're open on Thursdays from 10 to noon, and then on Sundays, 1 to 4. If you have any photographs that you'd like to donate to the society, we would absolutely love to have them. If you have photographs that you don't physically want to give to the society, we will be happy to copy them as long as we can use them. So we'll digitally copy them for people. We're specifically looking for any pictures you may have of the trains, the trains on Gros Seal, the trains on any of the bridges of Gros Seal coming across the island. We still do not have a single image of a train other than the one in the station. We know that someone has one. Someone had to have taken a picture. We're still looking for one. We've been looking for one for more than 50 years. Wow. Oh, wow. Find one. And businesses on Macomb Street and throughout the island, we're looking for any historic photos that anyone might have out there. Well, we'll, we'll really take any photos because okay. you know I mean what is what is now today if you've got a great picture of Macomb now what is now today 10 years 20 years from now will be Grozil's history so. and the photography that they're doing the show they're doing in October at the customs house mm -hmm. is going to be all of Grozil and uh, Grozil and photographers and Grozil and Grozil yeah, images I images right. yes got it any questions anybody yes. oh, yeah. Tammy I have a uh, uh, one question. You remember Jim the Barber? I do. I, I, for some reason, I can't remember his Engel. last name. Engel. Jim Engel. Engel, that's it. He had one of the greatest collections and, and of postcards. You got them? Yes. And oh, he donated that collection to fantastic. us 20 Jim, years yeah. ago, I think. Yeah. Jim yeah. was gracious to, uh, to donate. It is one of the finest, other than the Hayward archives, it is probably one of the finest uh, archives of Gross Hill photography. I mean, it, it's invaluable. That's amazing. Okay, thanks. Woody? Uh, Chris Mill. Turn your mic on, Woody. The Gris Mill? Chris See, now you know what we struggle with. Uh, awesome. <laughs> the, the horse mill gris mill, yes. Uh, Sorry. Is it going to go back? It is going to go back. What, um, the timing of putting the bike path in, we are in the process of redoing or re refurbishing, I should say, all of the the vast majority, if not all, of the historical markers because we took it down okay. and we had it refurbished. It so no, no, we, it's it's in the museum. If you come visit the museum, it's in the museum. Um, we are waiting to um, decide on where it needs to go because the place it was originally located and it can't go back to that place, so we're working with the township as to the placement of it. I am hoping it's going to go back up in the next two weeks. 
In the, in the area? That in the same, it's going to be in the same area, but where it was before, we can't put it there because of water mains or something that they've done to the area. So we have okay, to. So it's it. going back up. Yeah, it's the bike path is pretty much where it was. So we're working on getting it back in. All right. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, the gentleman who's restoring all the signs for us is doing an outstanding job. Um, they're hand painted. They, it looks really, really nice. So thank you. We just need to get it back up. Did we ever get to pick the last picture of the Wonderwell before they? Pull it down. The building. The EO camera uh, did do a fine job on being on site and actually videotaping the the final demolition, uh, as well as the last pictures of it. Um, I did not go. I kind of like remembering it how I remember as a child. Did you cry? It was, it was sad that they did that. I, mean, I remember going there when I was a kid. My first after school job was uh, was working at the Wonderwell making uh, smoke bombs. <laughs> Um, if I could quickly just do a public service announcement. Um, the Historical Society has created 100th Anniversary T-shirt. It has Groziel by the Decades on the back of it, and those are for sale at the museum. If you lay that down right there for a minute, too, they can get a picture of that, I believe. Is that how that works? No, it doesn't. Camera people, can we switch that, or here she comes? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, Tammy, one question. Yep. So I'm assuming that all the um, annual activities that take place at the Oldsmobile Mansion will now be, uh, <laughs> you know, we did. <laughs> what was there on Facebook and what, what now we can we can give to the Historical Society for future use in a hundred years? Yes, please. Absolutely, yes. It was this like is, being in Monte Carlo or Ibiza or someplace like because that. Because we have some wonder, because during World War II, uh, the Olds Mansion was the USO um, facility, so that's where all the USO bombs. Uh, Bar, no, Bob Hope performed there. There were all sorts of celebrities who, who performed there. So yeah, it's just carrying on the tradition of having a good party there. Yeah. <laughs> you. See, so if you if you look down at this T-shirt here, uh, what Tammy has here, these are for sale at the historical museum or our the at the museum at the museum. And they will be available on the 11th also. So everyone can run down there and get one, and they will have them on display and for purchase all through the 11th of October, too. But you said there's going to be something down there. Yep. Thank you so much, guys. Thank I, you. I hope everybody out there watching this or is going to watch it got something out of that because it was a good presentation. Yeah, thank you. Yep. All right, with that, any public comment? No? Nobody's out there? All right. Um, chairperson's report, I would like to, if you would, just look at that um, revenue and expenditure that we passed out when we all sat down, and I want to make a point. If you would look at the look at the top where it says 331-2014, it's the second column from the right. And if you go all the way at the bottom, it's going to give you the revenue and the expenditures. See where it says 11-31979? Mm -hmm. No. That is the most, of, I, I have all the numbers from 1999, and that is the highest that we've ever come in. So we should all be proud of ourselves and what we did. $11,319.09. Well done. Um, pretty much everything else that I have to comment is going to fall under the action items and the centennial celebration. So with that, I'm going to see if Lauren, our township liaison, Lauren Smith, has anything to say. Uh, just a few things. I want to remind everybody that we have the 100th anniversary stickers that are still for sale for $1 at the Recreation Department as well as Township Hall. Um, I also want to remind everybody, not only on the commission, but out there in TV land, that we are unfortunately losing a member. That's if we all vote unanimously to accept that resignation today. Um, that we will need a very hard-working individual to come on board and replace Julie, which is um, a big task. Um, also, I had passed out to everybody here a recap of our 2014 Island Fest, so everybody was supposed to give me some feedback. We've got four pages of notes. Um, I, I think it's pretty comprehensive. We can always add to this. We don't have to discuss this right now, but um, I think that this is a good guide to use as we start planning for 2015. Uh, the other and last final thing is everybody knows now that Tim Rooney has officially retired, or is officially in his last few days of um, 
his position here with the township and I personally want to thank him again for his service to the Island Fest Commission over the past years. Um, the commission got him a card as well as a cake over there. Um, I understand that Tim is at a concert tonight with his wife and um, so we will be enjoying the cake without you, Tim. <laughs> thank you, Tim. Let's thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that, that completes my report. Thank you, Lauren. Now on to we'll discussion items. We're going to take the centennial celebration because the other things that are listed in discussion items fall into that category. One being the farmer's market, which we are going to be putting at the um, public parking lot on Macomb Street. It sits next to Patton on the Ritz, I believe, which is on the north side of the street, just a little ways down from the Macomb Street Market. With that being said, Macomb Street Market is going to bring in vendors, and uh, if anyone has local things, uh, we're allowed to, we're allowed to bring like honey, and sure. if they grow tomatoes, and yeah. you're all about the... Are they going to work with Carol? Because yeah. I know Carol has Carol got all the contacts. Carol said she would absolutely okay, help us with that. So go through Carol Pinot, but down the stairs, or uh, you can contact us through the rec department for the Festival Commission. Also, um, we're going to try to get the alpacas and okay. find out Tails' involvement down there. A couple of things that I do have that are positive. We're going to have a trolley that's going to run down, up and down Macomb Street on Saturday, October 11th. The event goes from noon to 9. The trolley will run either like 2 to 6 or 3 to 7, and it will have 4 to 5 designated stops. We will also have a beer garden of sorts, which will be central in the parking lot of Fifth Third Bank. That's going to be where the band shell is going to be, and we are going to have everything from uh, a battle of the bands between six or seven local artists. It's mostly going to be bands from the high school and, and that type. We're putting out a hundred dollars. We need to vote on that hundred dollars, don't we, before I can say that? No, you can, you can say we're, it. Um, we're going to offer a hundred dollar yeah, first pass. place prize <laughs> for uh, the best band out of the Battle of the Bands, and we have Amy Longton, and I think Nicole Feeney down here is going to head that up now that I got the connection. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, the Knights of Columbus has uh, graciously accepted to do a something similar that was in the hangar for festival with ta uh, tables and kraut and dogs and sausage, and uh, the festival commission will be running the beer area, which will also be close to that. So that will be in the parking lot of Fifth Third Bank. But the trolley. On that note, yes, you might want to also remind everybody that because we will be running the beer area that we all need to kind of hopefully if, it, if it, you know planning now we can be available to work and volunteer yes and engage your friends and family because i'm going after kenny view <laughs> all right nicole you got a rain check on that one because i know you have you told me months ago that you had a wedding girl you go to more weddings um Tammy <laughs> taylor had mentioned briefly about the time capsule so as it progresses and uh uh, as us as, as a commission, when we find out what exactly is going to be there, does anybody have anything that they think would be good to go in there? I mean, some of us have met outside this meeting and discussed certain things, but any ideas about what should go in the time capsule? And the possible places to bury it would be somewhere back here in the Memorial Garden or maybe out front of Township Hall where the flagpole is. So there's a couple different options for that. Or Centennial Park. Or Centennial new Park. Centennial Park. They're working, they're doing some new stuff down at the farms area and it's going to be really even more nice now and uh, so possibly do the time capsule down there. Uh, local, pro uh, local produce. Uh, the Art Alliance will do, be doing an unveiling of their mural on the side of the hardware store also on Saturday, October 11th. So that will be, I don't know what time they're doing that, but they will unveil the Art Alliance's mural on the side of the hardware. The Rotary has been committed to do something up there. And we're going to be using the pocket parks and hopefully any businesses that are going to hear this or see this in the next you know month or so when they re-air it, please, we're looking for everybody to to take their business and step it up a notch, kick it up a little bit, and go out there and put up a tent and a table and, 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 and have some extra literature. I'm going to be pounding the pavement with some of these people and coming in your places and throwing some ideas at you. So brace yourself. Uh, <laughs> so the new um, car show, anything you want to add to that, anybody? Uh, no, not that specifically, but... Oh, well, pumpkin that. carving contest. That's going to be outside Wild Child Boutique. We're going to have a pumpkin carving contest for the children. Yeah, it's what about bobbing for apples? 
Bobby for apples, that would be good. That'd be fun. <laughs> All right. So between now and the next yeah. eight weeks, guys, let's put th our thinking caps on and uh, what we can come up with to make it extra special on Saturday, October 11th from noon to nine on Macomb Street. All right. Do we need to move on to the action items now? Okay. Under number nine, with the action items, the first one I'd like to vote on to put out there is the $100 for the first place for Battle of the Bands. I need someone to put a motion out there, please. I'll make a motion that we donate $100 to the best uh, winner of the Battle of the Bands. Do I have a second? Dave seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Any, any opposed? Okay, um, the next one is our lineup. Uh, as you know, I, I hate to give too much away, but we've already committed to 50 Amp Fuse, which will be performing on Saturday, May 30th of 2015 during Island Fest. Um, Nicole and I, I have gone and listened to Bob Seger bands. I've listened to the Beatles cover bands. I've listened to whatever it was in Trenton throughout the weekend. I'm around. I'd really like to commit to getting Killer Flamingos for Friday the 29th of 2015 for a festival as our headlining band. And I'd like to put a motion out there. There's five in the band. It's a $2,500 contract. I will forward the contract to all of you if we can pass this tonight. Um, I'll make a motion to hire Killer Flamingos for Island Fest 2015 for the sum of $2,500. I'll second. <laughs> all right, Nicole. All in favor of hiring Killer Flamingos? Aye. All opposed? Nancy Pass. This next one is a heartbreaker. This girl, she does more around town. Everyone knows her. She's the animal control officer. She's been so involved with festival and and just such a jewelry. I just don't know what to say, but it's her time has come. I wish I could sing like Bette Midler when beneath my wings I do like Johnny Carson. But um, Charlie's put in her resignation, and we need to vote on accepting her resignation and respect what she wants to move on. And, and she will be f with us, though, if we ever need her, right? I'll All right. Absolutely be around. If you look at every event, it's either the reserve. Turn that mic on, please. <laughs> there. Every event either has the police reserves attending or some uh, the tails organization involved, and I'm involved in both of those too. So. Um, again, as Lauren pointed out, uh, you don't need any special talent to serve on commissions, just a love for the township. Um, I've enjoyed doing this, but I need to focus a little more of my time with tails and the reserves. Okay. Okay, well, I will begrudgingly <laughs> make a motion to accept the resignation of Julie Cordes. Do I have a second? Sorry. What do you second? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a nail in the coffin. <laughs> okay. All in favor to take Joey Cordes' resignation? Boo. I, any opposed? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're free. <laughs> no cake for you. <laughs> so, now, yeah. so with that, remember we are looking for somebody that likes to have uh, a good time, can work well with others uh, you, most of the time. Uh, high impact fun, creativity, come on to Festival Commission and likes to, is that a drink symbol? <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <likes to, laughs> that is a requirement. <laughs> so there'll be up one chair opening and we are a really, really good commission and committee to work with, so. Okay, uh, any other action items that anybody needs to put out there? With that, individual commissioner comments. No sarcastic only and no cursing. Oh. Well, Nicole, you did that, didn't you, Miss Feeney? Yeah, yeah right. so clearly nobody read these. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm <laughs> I mean, uh, like, what? Excellent. I'm glad I didn't put in all the things that I wanted to. <laughs> well, let's, let's start with Dave, because if we end with Woody, it might be... Or, but Dave, do you have anything you'd like to comment tonight? Not tonight. Not tonight. Julie, anything from you? I'd just like to thank our Grosio Police Reserves. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Security was... Uh, seamless, flawless at this previous event, uh, best it's ever been. We didn't have any glitches and uh, everything went real smooth. Good, good. Bridget Hurst? No, I'm good. You're good? Yeah. I'm learning a few words, yes. at least tonight. <laughs> we got put in bay this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren and I have already spoke, so... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Moreau, Bill? Yeah, I'd like to say uh, thanks to all of the people who volunteered, and especially this board, who really, 
did an outstanding job for the best year we've ever had. And I'm proud to have served, and I'm, I'm really uh, applaud you guys and gals for all the work that we did. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have another great success next year. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Ann Darsnick. Yep, I just have a quick correction. If everyone looks at their um, budgets. Um, Ann is the so financial not, director here, so. So we're not <laughs> stating the uh, uh, inaccuracy. Okay. Um, I just want to let you know the 11,000 was in 2013 festival. The 2014 festival, we made um, $8,876, which was still wonderful. Um, but. The reason why the difference is I think we spent a little more money for investments for the future as far as decorations and lighting and all the improvements that we did. Obviously, the money we spent, well spent, will continue into the future. So, um, so when I see that balance of 331 2014, that's that what we had going into it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, just wanted to make that correction, but like I said, I think the difference came from the wonderful improvements and investments that we have. Right. I would, yeah, with, with Ian saying that, I would like it to be known that we invested quite a nice chunk of change into the hangar this year for electrical, and which needed to be done, and we did spend uh, close to $2,500, just so the commission knows that, that we did do improvements, and uh, that was on the festival, so thank yeah. you. Okay. So now we have money to burn for next year. <laughs> <laughs> or add more electrical. <laughs> Miss Nicole Feeney. This is our social network, social media girl. Yeah, we should probably talk about that at some point. Anyway, um, I, I just thank you to the committee for making the my very first Island Fest a rousing success, and I look forward to doing it bigger and better this year. Great. Quick, quick question for you, Nicole. Um, what, since you brought up social media, um, uh -huh. Did you get access to the Facebook page? No, that I did was not. arranged a couple weeks ago. So, okay, then it I'll was never to, given. To okay, I'll have to okay. look into that. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Woody Clark. Uh, Dad said I couldn't talk. No, I didn't know. You're, this is your turn right now. Nope, turn on your right. mic. You said I couldn't talk. Turn on your microphone. <laughs> Come off. Tell us, that good job. Notes. Tell us how much fun you had selling little wristbands, Woody. I got pictures of you selling wristbands. Well, that's yeah. good. You tell us somebody got a comment and knows what I talk about. All right. All right. Later, do we, uh, do we have any more business that we need to discuss? Do we have any new business that we need to discuss other than the October 11th that we went through? October 11th, noon to 9, Macomb Street. With that, our next meeting is going to be Wednesday, August 20th, which is the third Wednesday of the month. That's when we meet. Anybody out there in TV land, you're more than welcome to come and see what we're doing. And we do have one opening available. I know we're going to get a flood of, of people that want to come out of the commission. With that, we will adjourn, adjourn the meeting, uh, meeting at 8.45. So moved. 7.45, I'm Make sorry. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. Hi. Good night, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> that was quick.